everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm really very happy to be here today presenting my project in front of you and some really experts in the uh, app uh, marketing. So uh, I am uh, the founder and CEO of BU. I'm going to explain to you shortly what it's about. So BU, it's uh, uh, about finding the better you, healthy, fit, and happy. Today, more than 1.9 billion adults, they suffer from overweight issues. What's the solution in the market? We can find today hundreds or thousands of applications providing solution to weight loss. But most of them, they are pretty standard. You look up at this whole big database, you choose the food or you choose the exercise, and you count your calories. So uh, we are more like uh, driven by the quantity rather than the quality. Let's look at the problem. Weight loss, it's a, compo it's a function of two components, nutrition and fitness. Actually, the mic is not helping. Okay. So uh, today also we see a lot of good applications vertical in each part, nutrition and exercise. However, we didn't ask ourselves why do we eat more than we should or why we don't exercise. It's because at BU, we look at weight loss in a different perspective. I'd rather, I'd rather uh, draw it in a different geometrical shape. It's nutrition, fitness, with a strong mental and emotional base. Because we believe that emotions, they affect our food habits and they affect our physical activity. A change in lifestyle is important in order to reach good results in weight loss problems. Actually, this is our philosophy in BU. We, de we develop the application to differentiate a little bit from the crowd in the market by providing more a personalized application working on three dimensions. Let's see how we do it. We have developed a dynamic plan to let people eat better, move better, and feel better. This is a quick video now that can explain briefly the application. After getting to know briefly our um, user with a friendly um, profile questions, BU it uses uh, smart algorithms in order to um, uh, cross-check the user personal info with his food lifestyle, with his fitness activity, with any um, health issues that he has in order to come up with a unique program to each user. Even if you don't need to lose weight, the application will tell you you don't need to lose weight. Maybe it's better that you tone up. Or maybe if you want to build muscles but you have some extra weight, the application will tell you it's maybe now more preferred that you lose this extra weight before we put you on the build up muscle. So each user gets like an analysis at the end of the application. And then he gets to know his dedicated coaches. This is what we believe in BU, because BU is not a software, a software application where you get, this is your program for eating and for exercising. At BU, you have a coach who takes care of you. You can see from uh, Monday to Sunday, let's say, what you have to eat and when you have to eat. Everything syncs in a smart shopping list. And you can see the full details of each meal, from a starter, from a main to dessert. You can change the dish if you want, and you can see the full recipe and the nutritional facts of each meal. Uh, coordinated with your meal plan, here comes your fitness program. And this is really the strength in BU. So your fitness program is coordinated with your goal. If you want to lose weight, tone up, or build muscle, it's like a PT, as if you are training with a personal trainer, starting with warm-up, with a circuit, and a stretching. Each exercise has step-by-step um, -step indications, so you can know how to do it without really hurting yourself. And this is here, it actually, it comes the part of the fitness coach where you can check and chat with your coach in order to ask for any uh, information. Uh, you can track your weight, so the coaches, they can really monitor your performance. You're not alone at BU. Uh, you receive daily motivation tips inside the app. We don't bombard the user with a lot of uh, push notifications. And you have the chatting module. Actually, this is the old version, so in the, in the new version, uh, it has got a little bit uh, better layout where you can send a media, a voice text, or chatting with your coach. Um, so that's in brief the application. Today, where are we? Uh, we have been uh, selected in 
March uh, 2015 uh, as the top five applications in the fitness and health among 200 applications uh, as a startup. And we have been invited by Technogym, the number one wellness company, in order to do uh, our acceleration program in Venice in H Farm, which is number one Europe uh, accelerator, which is now listed under the stock exchange market. After the acceleration program in August, we launched the application, which was late August. And uh, today we're working on integrating the health kit, the Apple Watch, and we will be launching at large the application in the US and other markets, and as well as launching the Android version. So uh, coming to the marketing, okay, I'm not gonna come uh, detail the marketing funnel, which everyone knows, but actually I can say that in our marketing plan, we have uh, made a plan at different timelines in our strategy, starting from the ASO to the paid traffic, to working with influencers, brand ambassadors, and to, uh, of course, using the, um, the important analytical platform in order to track for the important KPIs in the marketing activity. We have been nicely um, promoted by the press. Um, let's say uh, Vogue magazine, they spoke about us um, at, in Corriere della Sera, in Milan Finance, and in Technogym PR channels. Uh, the results, we have very good results, really. Uh, okay, we're not, mm, we, have, we have made our first round, uh, seed round. Uh, it's not our in, intention now to just get as much as we can download because this uh, could be vanity metrics. What's really very important for us is to, uh, mm, I would say, uh, uh, focus on the quality of the users. So from these downloads, we have so far a very good KPI. Uh, the, conver the conversion from installs to total sign ups, it's sometimes exceeding 70%. We have uh, between 38 to 45% organic traffic, and um, the uh, app was really, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the app was really featured in the top uh, ranking app, in the top ranking uh, positions in some countries. So I'll give you some insights, really, as a startup, we have seen ourselves uh, in some decent position in the UK and in the USA, uh, but most importantly, we have jumped very quickly in some of the markets, reaching number one under the health and the fitness category. Uh, we have done also our exercise very well in the ASO. Um, and uh, as you can see, that in the USA, which is a big competitive market, if you look today for a health coach, you can see BU as listed number one. So that's in brief uh, the uh, details about the applications. Now I have maybe some questions to uh, the committee. Uh, today, as everyone, maybe I have listened to the other case studies in the morning, many of us we rely on Facebook because Facebook is easy. Uh, we can uh, do it ourselves at the office. We can uh, come up with these uh, nice uh, ad campaigns, change the videos, change the photos, etc. However, Facebook is like a seasonal platform. And I would say that now in December, maybe it's going to be very complicated to use Facebook to generate installs because there are going to be a lot of competition. Uh, for example, for, for, for instance, on the Thanksgiving Day, we noticed that uh, the campaign cost was really uh, stored up uh, sky high. So here my question about Facebook marketing, how can we control really uh, the CPI cost while also uh, choosing the right audience or the right interest in order to optimize for the CPI cost installed? So oh, yeah, um, I was actually asked to introduce myself first, um, so I'm doing this quickly. Um, first of all, I didn't know I have to wear this, um, <laughs> but I'm doing it. Um, my name is Richard Britton. I work for App Marketing Auditor. We are a full-service um, Berlin-based um, uh, app marketing agency, and we provide basically um, performance-based and engagement-driven um, user acquisition and um, basically take you by the hand from the beginning to the start, from ASO to user acquisition to user retention, everything in one box. Shall I continue or do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'll, I'll introduce myself. So my name's Tony Pierce. I am the CEO and founder of a games company called Games Grabber. Uh, games Grabber simply is uh, Pinterest for games. So instead of pinning into your collection, you grab, hence the grabber title, and it's just for gamers. So you build your games collections by grabbing games across the internet. People come on and join and follow your collection and discover games.
I also have a second hat, although this is the only one right now. Um, I run a networking event called the Centurions, and the Centurions is actually hosting the um, drinks event from six o'clock. So thank you to my sponsors, Telefonica and Redbox, um, and I hope you join us. Thanks. My name is Andre Kemper. I'm, I recently joined uh, Zalando, responsi being responsible for the performance marketing for one of their ventures called Fleek, which will launch hopefully quite soon. Um, but as I said, I just joined there, so my uh, previous um, employer was Lavu, and um, also there I was responsible for the international um, performance marketing. So I know what you're talking about on Facebook <laughs> in terms of having some challenges there. Like a, a bidding, you know, game. Sometimes when you add an interest, the audience, one interest, maybe your audience uh, get uh, by 3,000 more. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes if you uh, add one interest, let's say if you have targeting 4,000 people, maybe adding, let's say, nutrition or I'm saying whatever, uh, it goes down to 1,500. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes you don't really understand the association between the interest, the audience. Sometimes I have very good performing ads that they have low audience and they can perform better than other ads that they have higher audience. But end of the day, it's like, uh, you, uh, of course, this is something we have to monitor it every day. It's like our no, uh, uh, daily uh, breakfast in the morning to check our previous uh, day's uh, results and to see how you can really control the ongoing. Uh, yeah, so, sorry. So, so here's my view on Facebook advertising because I've spent a ton of cash on Facebook. There's, there's two things that, that Facebook do. One is classic PPC advertising where you can target a particular segment to a particular age group, a particular country, and Facebook does that fantastically well, although it's getting incredibly expensive on games, probably as high as five pounds per acquisition or per registered user. The other thing that Facebook do, which they have changed significantly this year, the algorithms, is um, lessen your organic reach on your fan page. So if you have a fan page on Facebook, and if you I don't know, take Coca-Cola, who has five to 10 million fans that have liked that page, Coca-Cola would have spent hundreds, if not millions of pounds building that page to get those likes, to be able to post their advert or their promotion to the people that have liked their page. Facebook this year turns that organic reach down to 5%. So. 5% of those millions of users will see that post, unless you pay to do it. So you have to boost every post. So it's become a pay to play on your own fan page. And that, I think, is having a significant impact on, on brands. And in fact, I heard that this week, it's almost gone down to zero in organic reach. So as a platform to advertise to, if you have the budget, it is fantastic. There's no doubt it can reach the market. As a platform now to try and get to your fans that have liked your page, unless, again, you want to boost it and pay for it, it's become very challenging. And I think there's better platforms to do it on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's because it's a seasonal traffic. I think uh, now in the uh, uh, end of Q4, we can't rely a lot on Facebook. I think this is the best thing to do, a mix between Facebook and, and other ad networks. In Instagram, I hear, I, I know it's owned by Facebook, but Instagram, I hear, is, is fantastic now for organic reach. And, mm -hmm. and it actually has a better conversion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can con confirm that actually, but um, coming back to your uh, original question um, about the CPI campaigns, which is app install campaigns on Facebook, uh, since you mean it's a seasonal thing, um, what I could recommend, for example, and for your very special use case actually, is um, to use the pre-Christmas phase uh, to figure out which creatives are performing best in and getting the highest relevance score on, on the Facebook um, platform. Um, which is really a, a very good indicator to see which ads will perform on your very specific audience with this specific creative, for example. So this is really some, some uh, phase where you can figure out a lot of things. And uh, since uh, you are a, a health and um, a food app, let's say, um, I would then try to scale after Christmas when everybody's really yeah. trying to get in better shape afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I can say, I mean, we, I'm, I'm a big fan of attribution, which means um, you look at the traffic you're providing and the users you're providing and you kind of analyze where does the best user come from for my particular purpose, for my KPIs. And Facebook serves one particular purpose or several purposes, but it can't do all. It can't, you know, it's not good for scaling. 
Um, it's you know it, it's it's hugely competitive when it comes to pricing. Um, you have to monitor it very you know um, um, intensively. So you can't use it for all. It's it's certainly good for you know for targeting users for um, uh, spreading the word and you know generating high quality user for other purposes. Is, is not as good. So attribution in, uh, means in that case, you know, you have to look what attribute, uh, what uh, uh, Facebook traffic is delivering, how much it's delivering, and then, you know, uh, probably um, uh, use some other means as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, then another point with Facebook, unless you reach a big, uh, uh, maybe uh, not less than 10K per month, uh, you don't get assistance from Facebook. That's another point that uh, they don't look at you as an advertiser. Um, that's all, this is another disadvantage mm. that uh, sometimes we face. So, yeah. um, I mean, it's clear. We, we mm. have seen today almost every app was talking about Facebook user acquisition. There is a big competition in the market, and this, you know, just raises the, the, the cost so much for, for, for the advertiser. So um, that's quite a normal market situation, I would say. And mm -hmm. Can I ask, what is your budget for Facebook? Uh, today we're a little bit less than 10k. Okay, and, uh, and, and um, because we are still, I'm uh, sorry, because uh, we are still in like uh, before really uh, going on and spending uh, high on Facebook. We are we would like more to understand our metrics, understand more our KPIs, understand better what's performing, what's not performing, and because we are releasing also various updates uh, on the application, so we didn't really want to go on large on Facebook. And what's your what's your KPIs, is it to get someone just to download the app or is it to get someone to actually download and buy something? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, really we had, uh, uh, of course, our KPI is to download the app and then to convert into a user and then from a user to a sale. Um, so how much is that costing? Mm. <laughs> Depending. So that's, that's the problem. I think there are, I mean, games, it's five pounds. You know, you have to have hundreds of thousands of pounds to acquire that user. You hope that that user in the end is going to spend more than five pounds, but you, know, you hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for, for your budget, I would not spend it on Facebook. There, there are so many better places that are so much cheaper where you can acquire really good users. Which one? Which one? Well, I, so, so I would say, I would, I'm, yeah. I'm intrigued. <laughs> well, I, I, would, I would generally still think that um, Google is cheap in certain countries, and, and the way that, the way that um, if I had that kind of budget, I would focus on one territory. Don't spread yourself too too thick. Re really focus on one country. You know, you can. I, I don't know where you where you really want targets, but you know, South America, those kind of territories are still very cheap to advertise in, and they download a lot of stuff. And you and what you can do then is, is once you've spent your ten thousand pounds, you can then see what the users are doing. So you can almost use it as a test campaign to see if they're actually enjoying the app, where they're bouncing, where they're leaving, what they're doing. Um, uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's just one area, but I, I, just, I just wouldn't, I think Facebook is not totally right. Agree. Yeah, of course, our budget now is not uh, fully uh, spent on Facebook. It's part, part of it on Facebook, but we're looking at uh, now adding other channels. And and, well, but so, so the, sorry, the peer-to-peer -peer recommendation is the number one, I think, way of, of, of selling a product. Now, some, your friend telling you how good it is is... It is ten times better than seeing an advert. So, so um, I think anyone can acquire someone. Right? Anyone can pay to acquire a user. It's retention that is the most important thing. You need to keep that mm. user with you. So anything you can do to um, give that user a reason to stay, whether it be a competition, whether it be invite ten friends and win a, a, a free health meal or, or, or a, a free fitness, whatever, but it, it's, it's something that I, I think is, 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 is much better at, for a startup. It, it's, it's really keeping those users with you and then get to a point where you start to see what your ARPU is, see if they're spending, and then scale it from there. Mm -hmm. But that, that's kind of, I find, uh, you know, in terms of when coming back to pimping your app, um, that's kind of the nature of the app, I find, is the engaging part, you know, because um, you have this uh, principle where you have coaches which uh, you can chat with in the app, so it's quite handy. You can ask them questions, they're there for you. So that's the engaging part, and I think you should build on that one because um, I believe, I'm not a big expert in health apps. I mean, I obviously I know them, but uh, I don't know all the functionality, but I think that seems to be a USP for me in terms of your app. So I should, you, 
you probably should focus, you know, on this engaging part of, you know, uh, giving feedback from professional people within the app um, as part of the subscription to the users. I think they, they're going to like that. Mm -hmm. And another thing, um, when it comes to, um, because you said um, you've done your ASO, right? Um, your ASO homework. Um, can I just add some things I, I notice? Like, um, no, 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 no I, I noticed on your app. Yeah. Um, obviously, you need to localize um, um, the, uh, the description and the title um, in the country you want to market your app in. Um, I also find, um, since you know iOS 8 or 9 uh, allows not a video preview, you should not save on that preview. I mean, it's good, but you should probably add some you know, people talking and uh, some speech. I think it's, it's a screen grab and some music on top of it. So I wouldn't save on that one because that's basically your conversion page. Um, and from there you convert the people, you know, even you might be in the top 10, but people go to your page and they look at the video, they don't like it, they don't download the, the app. So this is kind of a, you know, moment of truth for you um, to convert the people from the app store, from having found you, which was a long and hard way for you to get into the top 10. And then you can might have lose them because you save on the video or something like that. So that's uh, something you could improve on maybe. Okay. Okay. What what uh, what healthy percentage we should expect from the people who land on the Apple Store um, and then uh, who uh, takes the action to download the application? Um, I think this is a uh, a question of how easily they grasp the USP of your app. You know, there are so many um, apps, uh, health and fitness apps, which provide you with these same services. But since you have a different approach, a different USP, you might you know want to stress that. So I can't really say. I mean, it depends on the app and depends on the, the ASO and the description and the, the presence of the app in, in the app store. But there's no general number, I guess. Mm, but an, an, an average? Or <laughs> <laughs> in average? You mean like the conversion rate in average? I don't know, to be honest. Mm, okay. What about getting a celebrity involved? Um, yeah, actually, uh, with uh, Technogym, because it's uh, our partner and our uh, main shareholder in the, pro in the app, uh, we're working with them on that part for the next Because uh, uh, that might part. be, you know, invite 100 people and win a... a we are a, working a, on some endorsements, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's going to happen, but uh, not now. Now, in the first three months, it's uh, just uh, some testing for uh, BU and uh, to uh, a little bit also um, uh, to make a place for BU among, you know, the 100,000 uh, maybe applications in the health and fitness. Uh, we are not a fitness application. We're not a nutrition application. We are a wellness or we work on a holistic concept. So this is our, uh, th the first part is to start working on that concept and then later to start building more value in the app. Mm. Very good. Okay, well, please give a fair big round of applause. Uh, um, so my name is Sebastian Stricker. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I founded this app here called Share the Meal. Uh, it's now part uh, of the United Nations World Food Program. United Nations World Food Program is the largest humanitarian aid organization in the world. The core business of the of WFP it's um, it's to in that situation where the child needs something to eat, um, otherwise uh, it will die, or there's a serious risk from for uh, morbidity. That's when WFP comes in and does this so-called food transfer. So in Syria, there's a refugee camp. Children don't have anything to eat. That's the core business of WFP. They go in and they basically give that corn soy blend or that uh, um, uh, that. These, these specific nutritional products. Um, yeah, that's us. Um, so we launched on the 12th of November, and yeah. and that's the starting point. And I think I just want to say two things. The one is, if you look at hunger or food security or nutrition, that deals with that situation where somebody needs to eat. Otherwise, there are morbidity or mortality risks. The beautiful thing is, is that we are ending global hunger. It's not unsolvable. Every year there are less people that are hungry, and if we extrapolate that trend on the left side, sometimes, still in the century, there's a, very like, there's a very large likelihood that we will all see a world where there is no chronic hunger. 
but at the same time, it will still take decades. And that's what Shared Amine is about. We want to accelerate this, uh, this curve here on the left side, so basically push it down a little. Hopefully, just pull forward that one year where we will be living in a world where there is no chronic hunger anymore. But while it's positive, as of today, there's still so many children that go, uh, that go hungry, so many children that die from hunger every 10 seconds. Like, there are so many studies to every social problem. Here they would say health risk number one, more people die from hunger than HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined. That's what we want to do. And what we built, next slide please. Yeah, what we built is an app. Think of the situation, you're sitting uh, at lunch, you may be reading your emails or the news, you press a button and you share your meal, your food, with a child that has nothing to eat. So what we mean by that, you press that button, $50 cents go to the United Nations, with these 50 cents the UN can feed a child for a full day. It doesn't cost more, it's 50 cents or the total cost for a child that has nothing to eat. And in the app we show you where the meals are distributed. And um, this is uh, how we did. Um, we did a test launch in, uh, in, in, in Germany, um, uh, which was uh, in July. Um, and on the 12th of November, we launched globally. And so we uh, currently stand at 2.7 million daily rations that we've provided to children that have uh, nothing to eat, or some of them have a little bit to eat, and then we basically use that, 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 that money to feed more than one. If they only need 500 kilocalories per day, we split that up. But in essence, you can, you can say 2.7 million children that have nothing to eat fed for a day, and we stand at 260,000 installs. Now, I think what is really different to the apps that you've heard before, I can't spend any money on this. Um, so um, we've basically been uh, living off of what we've tried are these five marketing levers here. Public relations, social media, apps for features, celebrity ambassadors, and app promotion platforms. And um, what you see here is how we feel that they worked for Shared a Meal. Um, I think on public relations, our Germany uh, experience was that um, we would say features brought about, we had about 100,000 uh, installs in, in, in Germany. Features, we got a little, some features, telecom features as well, um, but um, it, that really led to maybe 5 to 10% of the downloads, and 90% of the downloads really came from public relations. It's been an amazing pickup, I would, and also for the global launch. I would say every single almost every single media outlet that you could think of, they somehow reported about us. Just yesterday, we had this PR company reach out to us and tell us there were 64,000 articles written on Shared Meal for the global launch. Absolutely amazing. Um, but we didn't get any TV for the global launch, and that's our experience. Television counts so much. In Germany, I would say out of the 90% that we attribute to marketing, 80% of that came from television. With us, it was on the 12th of November we launched. On the 13th of November, it was Paris. I was on my way to the U.S. to have an interview in New York with ARD. Then on Sunday, I should have been with CNN. On Monday, I should have been with CBS. All these interviews were, were canceled. Huge blow to us. We, I would have personally expected it to go much better if that hadn't happened. Social media went so-so. Uh, apps or features, I think we were extremely fortunate. If there's anyone from Apple or from Google here, thank you very much. Um, it was amazing. Google actually announced us as the, one of the best apps 2015 today, so that's super. Um, celebrity ambassadors, because you were mentioning it um, so so with us. Um, we had more some nice pickup. Mark Ruffalo, a couple of days, tweeted about us. So <laughs> fantastic. Um, and then app promotion platforms, they really still want to do something, but that didn't come, come through. <laughs> And um, now, yeah, that may be for your experts, that may be interesting. Um, basically, an analysis of organic deep links and features um, for uh, the Germany test launch and then from the global launch. And I interpret this data as we really missed that television, that PR. Um, uh, we've had, in the Dach launch, in the Germany launch, we've had 85% uh, organic downloads. Now, for the, for the international launch, it was only, only 30%. And um, those are learnings, but I would actually like to talk about something else, um, and that is um, what I think that we need to go forward, and maybe if you have comments on that, that would be fantastic. But I, um, I think what is, for one, I hope the positive side for you guys is that it must feel like a playground. Um, we, 
we really don't, I mean, you've seen, we've identified these five pillars and we just now learn how they perform. Um, so we really don't understand a lot about app promotion yet, I hope. Um, but on the other side, we really have a problem with spending money as a, as a non-profit organization. Um, and, and we need to be very, very careful. Once we start spending money, we really need to be careful that it's super effective. Um, it's, we have an average revenue per user of $5 at the moment. Um, yeah, we hope to, we hope to improve that, obviously. Um, but I think going forward, I feel that we need to, PR doesn't seem to be a sustainable, sustainable uh, marketing lever. It's been amazing, but something happened and we didn't, didn't get the PR that we prepared for in reality for a full month. We worked with these television stations, wrote them emails, tweeted them, and, and all that stuff, and that all fell through. So PR, I believe, is not a sustainable marketing channel. I feel that we need to focus on one, building partnerships, so improving the relationship with Apple and Google, and then maybe with the telcos and, and food delivery platforms, something like this. Number two, I think we have to think about costs per install campaigns. Um, but that is also a political uh, battle that I still need to take to be able to spend money for marketing. And the third one is um, influencers. What you were mentioning, I think we just didn't do it right. Yeah. Seems um, new to me because I never worked with an app who um, doesn't want to spend money and doesn't want to earn money, right? Uh, or do you have like a business goal, or do you earn money, or do you make money with the app? Or so, what's 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 your uh, business model basically? Well, it is a and non-profit thing. Um, so. No, we can't make money out of it, but mm -hmm. our metric, if, if another metric is maybe dollars, then our metric is, in essence, the, the, number, of that we, yeah, right? the number of means that we, that we distribute. Okay. But will you have a um, uh, budget in the future? For well, I think my, my, my hope is that when I'm able to show that a cost per install is maybe 20% of the average revenue per user, mm -hmm. then I would hope that I get a million or two million or ten million dollars that I can pour into into uh, cost per install campaigns, but mm -hmm. I still need to show that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you had already uh, very good growth rates, right? Without spending any money. But it was PR, I think. I think it was PR and features. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I, I would believe, you know, it's, obviously it comes at the right time, it's Christmas, we have like this Willkommenskultur in German, um, and then all these things, so people are ready and, and willing to donate, right? So I think it, it will, you know, naturally increase. I mean, it always depends what kind of growth rate you want, right? If, if you uh, look at the, uh, the Chinese gentleman earlier with his uh, 10 billion downloads or whatever, you know, you probably don't want that, but where do you want to go, you know? You, that's the question. If you want to... Um, if you think big, then obviously you need some money, probably. Um, if you want to, you know, stick in that area of, like, I don't know, a thousand dollars per day, five thousand, then you probably don't need, you know. No, no, I, think, I think we want to max it out. Uh, we yeah. want to make this as big as possible. Um, otherwise, it, I mean, if we invest our time, we need, to, I think it, it shouldn't be any other logic than for a for-profit startup as well, only that our metric is another one, mm -hmm. but we either grow or we reach a certain level where we feel, okay, this is making a difference and our time is well invested. But I, I mean, if you ask me, I'd be, okay, I wouldn't have expected to have 300,000 downloads, but I want 10 billion. <laughs> nice, come to us. <laughs> um, so I, I think this app is fantastic. Uh, I've downloaded it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I can't believe no one else has done it before. And for 35 pence, when you just click a button, it's, it's genius. So well done on that. I think it's, it's fantastic. Um, coming, I, I have to put this back into games because that's my side. There's a, there's a friend of mine that runs a games company called Playmob, um, and you should speak to her. And the idea, the idea is that is games companies uh, put um, her code into a game, and at certain points, it triggers... You buy something and a percentage of that goes to a charity which um, she runs. So you can level up for a pound and 35% will go to, to you. And um, that's, that, that does extremely well because the game companies want to get involved. It's a charity. And to the user, they're buying not just a level, but they know it's going to a good cause. Um, so uh, that, that, that's one area. Um, again, the other area is getting celebs involved and... and 
one of the things that we did um, with Games Grabber, because you know, we were a startup and couldn't afford the Facebook budgets and that kind of stuff, was go to um, gaming influencers on YouTube. And most of them are, uh, are kids in their rooms that have millions of followers and um, are very happy to get a thousand pounds in their pocket for mentioning something. And I think everybody likes to be involved in a charity. And I think, I'm not saying you go to those kind of influencers, but you know, go to these people that have a huge fan base that, that literally just say anything and kids will do anything. And, um, and, and try and get those involved. You just said that you get uh, somehow sort of unlimited budget if you can prove with a smaller budget, let's say, that it works out, right? So... Um, let's say at the moment the situation is on a daily basis I'm getting like three pitches from any ad network or RDB platform sitting in these rooms here and there are like 50% of the people sitting here pitching me that every day and it's like they have fantastic algorithms to outperform everything else in the market right so that's a standard sales pitch here you've heard that probably a couple of times now so if you come up with a proper plan maybe and, and um, say come on let spend $10,000 for free for my Share the Meal app. You can put this as a marketing um, for, for your ad network. And um, if we then together can prove that it works out, then you will probably get a high stake in that unlimited budget campaign probably. So maybe some of the people here are interested in that then. Yeah, it's a good, great idea. Raise your hand if you are. <laughs> well, I think... Um Looking at the app, I also like it very much. It's a good idea. Um, might be, you know, some um, opportunities for gamification, for example. You know, a leaderboard or some with a big, big spender, big donator, donator of the week, this kind of stuff. And then obviously, you know, use all kinds of um, channels. You, you mentioned already some here. There are probably some more, you know, like like email or even go on the street and hand out leaflet, leaflets or whatsoever. I mean, you probably will find volunteers to do so because it's a noble reason. So, I mean, I would basically use all, you know, marketing channels. And, you know, probably you are a group of people really enthusiastic about this thing because you believe in it. So this obviously gives you additionally... Uh, resources for, for doing your things. So, uh, I would okay. Did you think about partnerships with big um, restaurant chains? Obviously, yeah. you did. Yeah. But Absolutely. what's their reaction on that? Like McDonald's and stuff? Mm. Yeah, I think the fantastic thing is, is we're a little bit not flooded, but there are a couple of companies that reached out to us. Um, at the same time, we're a startup. And, um, and we really need to be careful at the moment with where we invest our resources. Um, and um, yeah, I, yeah, it could be yeah, whether it's a food delivery platforms or a restaurant chain or. Yeah. Can you partner with another charity with this, like Comet Relief, or I mean, can you partner with those guys? Is that well? I think if it makes sense, um, yeah. I think our metric really is the number of meals that we distribute, and uh, if we can come up with a model that that is is beneficial to that to that goal, then yes. At the same time, I have to say, I think all these partnerships, there's, we've tried that in the past a little bit, and there's so much talk, and it takes so long, and in the beginning it seems so easy, and then all of a sudden all these hurdles come, come up. Uh, I think simplicity, I, my gut feeling is a little bit simplicity at the moment is, isn't bad, and that's why I, I look so much towards the cost per install campaigns a little bit, um, and improving the average revenue per user through my team, basically. That that sounds very attractive at the moment to me, um, we, we but, I, sorry. but I don't know whether it's possible. And I guess we simply have to test it. Um, I don't know what the cost per install is. We, it doesn't really work yet. The campaigns that we try out, but we, we've invested a couple of hours maybe into that. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the average revenue per user of five dollars is. I hope it's increasing. We've just we're out now for two weeks or three weeks. We'll see. You know, we talked a lot about um, marketing today and um, all the networks and uh, big technology providers, they talk about outbound marketing. Um, so there's another way of, which is obviously called inbound marketing and obviously you deal with a topic which is everybody uh, is interested in and you can you know, even like, you know, raise the bar when you show more visuals, for example, of poor children or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, might sound funny, but you know, that kind of uh, gives uh, or creates reactions in the people and you know, gets uh, additional motion for your app. So visual and you know, kind of um, any kind of 
I guess you have a Twitter feed and you, you show uh, catastrophes all over the world and how they can help yeah. by, by using your app, you know, this kind of mm -hmm. approach, I would say. Um, any final comments? No? Okay, what's well, a good place to end? I thought that was a really interesting presentation. Thanks, Sebastian. And Thank you very much. Much.